Okay guys, welcome back to uh, another tutorial. I was looking over a couple of the examples I had when I used to study the subject of structural analysis and I came across the example shown. It's really interesting. This example basically combines probably most of the knowledge you know in uh, structural analysis in terms of determinant beams. We'll try to draw the uh, shear and bending moment diagrams for this beam, which has a hinge right here in this area. At B, there is a hinge. And it has a fixed support at A, a roller at C, and an overhanging segment from C to D. So how can we do this? Alright, we we start by looking at the problem and first we have to determine whether can we do it using the three equations of equilibrium? Can we find the reactions using these equations or not? Because the key to drawing the shear and bending moment diagrams is finding the reactions. By looking at this, if somebody will ignore the hinge at B, one can tell that you have three reactions at A and one reaction at C. That's total of four reactions. So total of four unknowns. And since you have three equations of equi equilibrium only, you cannot use statics only to solve this problem. But the thing is, the hinge here will help us basically divide the problems or divide this, this problem into two beams and solve each beam separately. So let's get started. The way I like to look at the hinge, I like to consider the hinge as a roller. How so? First, if I do this and I stop at the hinge and continue right here. So what do we have for this segment? We have uh, six skips acting at D then from C to here I'm assuming that I have a roller here and of course I have a, a roller here that's from the original problem let me do it like this and I have a distributed load triangular load that looks like this and for the second problem it's basically that and what do I have here I have a fixed end and here I have 12 cap per foot and in here of course we have a different value for this segment but the thing I'm I'm saying here that if I look at let's call this part 2 and this is part 1 and of course there's a, a force at this end it's either upward or downward so th there is a force unknown force at this end then I will ask myself this question which part can be done using statics only the way I look at this problem is by si by counting the number of unknowns in each beam and then decide which one I can do. If I take part 1 for example I will have at the fixed end I'll have three unknown reactions plus I have one unknown reaction here coming from the second part so that's a total of four unknowns four unknowns greater than three equations cannot be done but if I take a look at the second part part two what do I have here I have a force probably it's pointing upward I have another one here and that's it so I have two which are less than three equations so I can use this part, part 2, to do to start and get the value of this unknown force 
and it will become non force then I'll place it over here and that by placing the non force now on this part I will have here three unknowns which are these this way I can solve this the first part so let's see how can we do this okay let me scroll down okay so the first beam I have a beam that has a reaction here a reaction here a force here and a triangular load that looks like this and the dimensions I have here are 3 feet 3 feet and 2 feet I have 6 kips the value here well, let me s scroll back again if I look at the problem the original problem so I'm dividing basically right here okay what is the value at this point that's my question now the value at this point can be found by seeing that the value at the top here is 12 and the whole length is 6 uh, the, I mean the whole length is 12 and since it's linear okay what happens if I move half of the distance the value on top will drop by half so here it's going to be 6 k per foot okay now let me go back to my uh, problem here okay so right here let me erase this very quickly and right here I have 6 k per foot now I will say this reaction is BY this reaction is CY and now I'm ready to solve this part okay so for this thing I will do the summation of the forces in the y direction should equal to zero so I have to concentrate this triangular load somewhere along the segment from here to here and since in triangles triangle load it will be concentra concentrated here at a distance of one third L so one third of six is two so the distance here is two and the value will be the area under the triangle which is one half multiply by the six multiply the six is the height and multiply by the six which is the base and that will give me 18 kip so what what are the forces I have right now I have BY plus CY the forces coming from the bottom which should equal the forces coming from the top which are 6 plus 18 which are 24 K alright now this is the first equation. The second equation I'm going to use is the summation of the moments about B and I'm going to take this as my positive direction. So what do I have? I have 6 multiplied by the whole length with which is 8 and the direction of the rotation is this way this is the direction of the rotation so it's negative sign plus then I'll have the CY multiplied by 3 this is the CY multiplied by this distance which is 3 and the rotation okay let me see the rotation is this way this rotation is this way is positive then plus I have the AT multiplied by the 2 so it's AT multiplied by 2 okay and it's rotating this way so it's negative and that should equal to zero now if I solve for CY I will get 28 kips okay 
Now if I substitute back into this equation right here, I would say by plus 28 equals 24. That will give me by equals minus 4k. So what does the minus sign say? The minus sign basically says that my assumption of the direction of the force of the reaction is wrong so it should point, point downwards. Now the second step is to transfer this force, the by, the minus 4, and if you draw it this way downward it's 4, if you draw it upward it's minus 4. Okay, not to confuse you guys with the direction of the, or the assumptions of the positive directions, but since we assumed it to be upward and it became minus 4 so the, dir the correct direction is to the uh, bottom. Okay, so the second part of the beam basically looks like this. Okay, and remember from the other part I had a force like this with 4, uh, the magnitude of 4 and if, uh, at the hinge we should have equal force and magnitude and opposite in direction so I should have a force like this acting at the edge of the AB segment okay and now what about the forces or the reactions here okay the reactions uh, I don't have any X uh, reaction I have an upward reaction and the moment is this way. One would ask why would you assume the moment to be in this way? Okay remember if you have a beam and if you make a cut of this is the beam and you make a cut in here and we'll say this is your beam this is the shear force and this is the moment and on the other side it's going to be the other way if you take this co this uh, set of uh, directions to be positive, stick with it. And since we are cutting the beam right here, and I'm looking at this part of the beam, so I'm assuming these are my directions. So that's a y. These are my positive directions, basically. Now I need to solve for a y and m a, but first I need to transfer the load I have shown right here into point loads okay one way of doing it is by basically dividing the load into two portions to have a triangular load by itself that goes like this and then looking at the rectangular one that goes like that and now we have to take a look at the magnitudes of these loads okay what about the easy one is the rectangular load the magnitude okay we have a 6 here and the distance let me write down the distances we have total of 6 so if I'm concentrating the rectangular it's gonna be at the middle so that's 3 and 3 and so for the magnitude of the rectangle it's gonna be 6 by 6 which is 36 kip and for the triangle the whole thing is 12 but since I've taken away 6 so I am end up having only six in here so the area of the triangle in this case is going to be one half multiplied by six multi six is this distance and multiply by six which is the whole distance of distribution and I will have 18 so this 18 is for this and uh, for this uh, load and the 36 is for the other one let me clean it up a little bit. Let me draw it again right here. 
Okay, so we have, let's try the black color right here. Okay, we have this. Okay, and we have a 4. And we have an unknown force of AY. And we have an unknown moment, MA. And I'm going to use a different color for concentration. There is a constant, okay. I have this concentration, which is... 36 K and for the other one I'm gonna use probably this color and I'm gonna concentrate right here which is 18 kips now for the dimensions let me do this so this is 3 the total is 6 remember the total is 6 feet so, and this one is concentrated at one-third of L, which is 2, so this is 2, and this is 1, total thing is 6. Now, basically, what we need to do is the summation of the forces in the y direction should equal to 0. So, you have 4, which is this one, minus 36, minus 18, because they are pointing downwards, plus a y should equal to zero and if I solve for a y I will get 50 K that's a y and if I take the summation of the moments about a to be zero okay so I will have ma plus 18 multiply by 2 now what is the direction of the rotation it's this way okay so what do I have is it positive or negative remember we are looking at this side the right hand, right hand side where we have this is our positive direction now so this one is positive now let's keep going the 36 multiplied by 3 again it's rotating this way is positive of course MA is positive and the last one is the 14 which is plus or the 4 4 multiplied by the whole length is 6 and it's rotating now it's rotating this way so this one is negative and that equals to zero and if I solve for MA I will get a value of minus 120 kip foot okay so far so good now let me try to clean up everything so we can start drawing the shear and bending moment diagrams uh, they are a little bit tricky we'll try to use all, all we know so far in drawing these diagrams let me draw the beam very quickly roughly it looks something like this okay we have a force here and we have I believe a reaction not here, it's somewhere in here we have a hinge here and we have a hinge at 6 3 3 and 2 probably doesn't look like a 2 but anyways so we have a 6 here, not 4 6 kip now what I will do, I'll use the red color to represent the reactions. So what do I have here? At this one, at B, I have 28, I believe, yes. And in here I will have 50. And in here I will have the 100 and... 20. Is it uh, in this direction? Yes, it's uh, 120, but I will remind myself it's a negative 120. Now what I need to do is start doing the 
shear force and bending moment diagrams. Okay, how can we do this? Alright, let's uh, just quickly sketch a line here and now we need to identify the points that I'm interested in finding the shear and the moving at so it's the beginning of the beam at the hinge at the support and probably at the end of the load and at the other end of the beam so let's say this is the shear diagram okay now let's start by doing this we start from zero and we go up 50 units like this 50 okay now what is the value of the shear at this point at the hinge okay how can you calculate this go back to the load and calculate this area this is one way the other way is using integration so we'll try to do both what about uh, this this area we know here it's 6 and this one starts with 12 and go and it's distributed over a 12 and if we move half the distance we will move we will drop half the load so what is the area here we've done this before we divided this into two you can you can use the trapezoidal rule to do this one but we calculated this as I believe 18 and this one as 36 so the total area is the summation of these two so it's 18 plus 36 and that will give me 54 so the area is 54 but this area is telling me that I should drop from the previous shear value by 54 units but I'm dropping from 50 so it's dropping from 50 in the positive dropping by 54 that will make me go to negative 4 okay and now what else can we get what about the shear at the end of the load or what about the shear up to here because this is an interesting point so all I need to do is calculate this area okay how do I calculate this area it's 6 and it's distributed over 6 so this one is 3 because we are moving half the distance so the trapezoidal rule uh, let me try to remember it says this plus this over 2 times this so it's 3 plus 6 over 2 multiplied by 3 so 9 over 2 multiplied by 3 9 divided by 2 multiplied by 3 that will give me 27 over 2 which is 13.5 okay so the area of this segment is 13.5 k this number is telling me that look back at the previous point and drop 13.5 units from the previous shear value what is the previous shear value is negative 4 and how do I drop 13.5 just go down 13.5 you will end up here and the value will be 17.5 so in the negative of course alright using the same logic what is the area of this triangle is this is 3 and this is 3 so it's 9 over 2 and the area here is 9 over 2 which is 4.5 okay but we need 
So remember we have a 28 here. This 28, before continuing to the next point, this 28 will try to push the shear diagram 28 points upward. So if you have 17.5 and you're going to be pushing it 28 units upward, you're going to end up having 10.5 in the positive somewhere in here. I don't know, I'm not drawing everything to scale, but 10.5k. Then from this 10.5k, I will add the value of the shear right here, or the value of the uh, area under the load diagram which happens to be 4.5 so if I say 10.5 and I will drop by 4.5 I will end up having 6 here now between this point right here and this point there is no load zero load so I'm gonna continue to here and amazingly I'm gonna be dropping by six units right here so my shear diagram starts from zero does something funny then it goes back to zero and that's a great checkpoint that you are doing everything correctly now the question is what are what, what is the shape of the lines between th uh, this point for example and this point this point and that point I mean this point and this point this point and that point that point uh, okay I, I know this this one is straight line like this and this one is negative and between 6 and 6 there is no load I know it's like this okay but what about between 10.5 and 6 what about between 50 and minus 4 what about between minus 4 and minus 17.5 in one of the tutorials I uploaded I or I showed you a, a good shortcut to determine the shape of the uh, diagrams I'm gonna do it right here okay let me change the colors for now the shortcut looks like this it says positive decreasing negative increasing negative decreasing positive increasing now let's ask yourself this question you're trying to do the shear diagram so you look at the load diagram and ask yourself this question is the load diagram positive and decreasing for the load and that's only applies for the load positive load means the points or the arrows of the loads are pointing upwards and the negative of the uh, load meaning the uh, load is arrows are pointing downwards and if you look back at the problem we have the arrows pointing this way so it's negative okay so it's either this case or that case is the load value as we move from left to right is it increasing or decreasing apparently it's decreasing so we have this case this is our case and what do I know now the shape amazingly the shape is this line so the concavity so it should look something like this so between 50 and negative 4 I will have a concavity like this and again the same logic applies to this segment it's ne uh, negative and decreasing so it goes like this it's not a straight line it's concaved up uh, let me clean it up okay then it jumps straight up because of the 28 and again it's negative and decreasing so it goes like this now we have the shear diagram the tricky part now is finding the moment diagram because remember 
we f we found the shear values using what? Using the area under the load diagram. Using the area under the, the load diagram is basically finding the integration of the load function. How's that? Now comes the second part of how to do the shear diagram again. Let me clean up this area so we know this one now. I will not erase uh, the shear diagram. I'm just going to prove to you guys that what we've done so far can be done using just numbers without looking at the uh, load diagram. So, what is my load equation? If you look at this, just pick two points. Let's say you pick this point right here, start from 0, 0. So it's this point 0, and the value right here is 12. So it's 0 and 12. And the second point is going to be this one. So you are picking the points on this line, this point and that point. Okay, this point is 12 and 0. And if you apply the y equals mx plus b equation, the equation of the straight line, and you use this point to identi identify the m, the b, you will end up having wx equals 12 minus x. This is the equation of the line. Let me do it very quickly. So if I use the first point, 0 and 12, so this is the x and this is the y and this is the x and this is the y okay uh, the x is 0 so and the y is wx in this case so it's 12 equals m multiplied by 0 plus b from that you get b equals 12 okay and if you use this point 0, which is the y right here, equals m multiplied by 12 plus now the 12. This 12. And if you solve for m, you will get negative 1. So your equation wx equals negative x plus 12, or simply the way I did it, which was 12 minus x. Okay, let me erase this part and I'll just write the equation of the load for you guys so we can carry on so I have WX equals 12 minus X now to find the shear equation you start with the original shear meaning whatever shear you have at the beginning of the beam and then you add to it the integration of the negative of the load dx okay what what is my uh, original shear original shear is 50 which is the reaction plus the integral of negative 12 minus x and if you do this thing, you will have Vx equals x squared over 2 minus 12x plus 50. This is the, your shear equation. Let's try to check. Does this equation make any sense? does this equation represent the line I have okay let's see at x equals 0 I have a 50 for this value checks now let's see if at x equals 6 I will have negative 4 so V of 6 equals 36 over 2 minus 60 72 is it plus 50 let me grab my calculator here guys so it's 36 divided by 2 minus 12 times 6 plus 50 
I, you can try guys, I got minus 4, so this is the value. Okay. You can, you can start doing this before even going through the uh, calculation of the areas. If you want to do, do it just by using integration. The reason I did it by integration now will be clear to you just, just right now. Okay. Imagine if I want to do the moment diagram. Again, these are the interesting points right here. That's another one. Maybe here maybe here and maybe here and plus I have a new one which is where the shear diagram crosses the x-axis okay let me try to clean this area up just like that so it will look nicer okay now if I want to use the same logic we've done before we introduced the integration part th that means I need to calculate this area how in the world would you do this it's it's curved okay the only area I can calculate probably is this area which happens to be 6 by 2 which is 12 okay what about the other because remember for you to calculate the moment at any point is basically calculating the area under the shear curve from the beginning of the beam up to the point you are interested in so if I'm interested in the moment value at this point I'll go up like that and I'll calculate this area but as you can see it's probably impossible to calculate it especially in an exam okay so since I know the equation of this line I will integrate it that's basically it okay and how do I do this again mx equals m naught which is the beginning moment plus the integration of the x dx and what is m naught if I scroll back just a bit this is m naught it's 120 in the negative okay so it's minus 120 plus the integration of x squared over 2 minus 12x plus 50 and if I do this integration I will get x cubed over 6 minus 6x squared plus 50x minus 120 this is my moment equation okay now if you want the value of the moment at any point on the graph all you need to do is plug in the x distance so what are the moments values are at uh, okay what about at this one what is the x value here no not this one I mean this one the distance here is 6 from here to here is uh, no is it six let me double check it's always good to double check yes it is it is six okay okay so let's try to get m of x or m of six i mean if you understand what's going on in this beam you can get the answer right away without even doing the problem at the moment at this point that means the moment at the hinge and we know the moment at the hinge is zero that's one of the purposes we introduce a hinge in a beam but let's double check so it's 6 cubed over 6 minus 6 multiplied by 6 squared plus 50 times 6 minus 120 and I'll trust my calculator now so 6 cubed okay divided by 6 that's 36 minus 6 multiplied by 6 squared which is 216 50 multiplied by 6 is basically 300 
minus 120. I'm crossing my fingers here. I don't want to say it wrong, but 36 minus 216 plus 300 minus 120 should equal to 0. Yes, we've done it correctly. So the moment value at, now let me use the green, right here is 0, right here. This is the moment value. And the moment at x equals to 0 is 120, right here. So that's a negative 120. Okay. The moment here is 0. The moment here is uh, 120 and at this point right here where the shear diagram crosses the uh, x-axis I should have a maximum moment since I'm going from here which is 120 the negative and all the way to the 0 the maximum is not a negative 120 or 0 the maximum should be somewhere here so I'm assuming it's somewhere in here for me to find this value, I need to know this distance. Okay, and how do I know this distance? This is where the shear is zero, right? So all I need to do now is take this equation and set it equal to zero and solve for x and if you do this, if you say v of x equals 0, meaning that x squared over 2 minus 12x plus 50 equals to 0, you will get two values. You will get 18.6 and you will get 5.36. So which one would you choose? What is the, the total length of the beam? The total length of the beam is 6 plus 6 plus 2. So it's 14. So this 18.6 is out of the question. And this one makes sense because remember the distance x right here is 6. So it's just before the 6. I'm probably I'm not running to scale but it's before the 6. So right here the distance is 5.36 and what is the value of this moment how do I know it I go now to the moment equation and I do m of point 5.36 and if I do this correctly I will get this is the moment equation so I have 5.36 cubed over 6 minus 6 times 5.36 squared plus 50 times 5.36 minus 120 okay and the my calculator would say 5.36 uh, cubed okay divided by 6 I'll get a value minus 6 times 5.36 squared I'll get another value plus 50 times 5.36 then minus 120 I will get 1.20 foot. Yeah, it's a very small value, but it's a maximum, a local maximum. It's a 1.29. Let's say it's 1.29, because there's a 7 here. Okay, now what? Now we need to find the value of the moment at x equals here which is 9 so all I need to do is go back to the moment equation and plug x equals 
9 and if I do this I leave this part for you guys at let me write it here at x equals 9 I have m equals negative 34.5 and finally so I know the moment here which is negative 34 which is somewhere in here negative 34.5 and now what about the moment at this point this one is easy you don't need to do any equations you just look back the moment at this point is either the area of the shear diagram from here all the way to here or this one this area so the moment here is basically 6 times 2 which is 12 but again remember at the free end the moment is 0 and you cannot have a 12 positive going up the, here so it should be negative 12 so it should I will say if you don't trust this method I mean the, the the way I used it to calculate the 12 just plug in x equals 12 x equals 12 into the moment equation and you'll get minus 12 okay let me try to clean up some of the things here okay I will uh, clean up this part because I need to draw something okay and this one okay what the hell well, let's let's uh, get rid of this since we have the moment equation and the shear equation it's that's enough now again I'll go back to my short uh, to the oval shape I drew to know the shape so what do I have here? I have positive decreasing, I have a negative increasing in this one I have a negative uh, decreasing, yes, and in this one I have positive increasing okay now let's take a look at, I'm, okay, uh, let's, let me say, let me say this now I'm doing the moment, so I apply this oval shape to the shear diagram when I did the shear diagram I applied it to the load diagram okay now the question is is the shear diagram positive or negative remember in the load we said the load is positive if the arrows are pointing upwards and it's negative when the arrows are pointing downwards now we don't have any arrows here the way we determine if the shear uh, diagram is positive or negative is simply by looking at it is it above the x-axis or is it below the x-axis if it's above clearly it's positive if it's below it's negative now so it's positive okay and decreasing right so positive and decreasing what do I have positive and decreasing so the concavity of the moment should looks like this so from this point it's positive and decreasing where positive and decreasing all the way to here to this point so it, it's concave like this now this segment is negative and decreasing or increasing it's negative and increasing because remember the value here either even if it's uh, below the x-axis as we go from left to right the value of the shear increases so it's negative and increasing so it's this part so it should be concave this way so this part looks like this okay now let's keep let's keep going what about from here to here it's positive and uh, I mean it's negative and increasing so again it's this way so it looks like this this is concave like that now what do we have 
this part from here to here it's positive and decreasing okay so it's this one again so it will look something it's positive and decreasing so it will look something like this and for the last one we don't need to look at this shortcut because for a straight line uh, a constant value it's a straight line so it's a straight line goes like this okay so this way now we have drawn the shear and bending moment for this interesting beam the points you need to, con uh, to concentrate on are the following try to use every single trick you know to calculate the reactions to um, avoid using integrations if you can because uh, what I found from uh, my students that it's easier for them to calculate areas they can relate to areas, uh, areas because they are good in doing that and if it's nearly impossible to calculate an area and if you know uh, how to describe the function uh, the shear function for example just use integration okay and uh, that's it for today I hope you learned something I really enjoyed doing this problem because I, th I feel I personally feel that I used a lot of the tricks I know to solve this problem. Thank you for watching.